an update on uh, on what is going on imbo so as many of you know that imbo is a polyherbal ayurvedic formulation and uh, there is no secret about its origin uh, ayurvedic people very well know that there is a classical medicine called pranava mandur which is a judicious combination of mandur bhasma and 20 herbs and this is described in charak sahita and then later on in all pharmacopoeias whether rasarangani uh, rasat samuchya peshaj ratnavali uh, everywhere it has been mentioned but it is uh, used for pandu rog pandu rog means anemia or jaundice there is a controversy mandagni means anorexia lack of appetite urge means piles plea and yakris vidhi rog means spleen and liver related disorder and throat rog inflammation so this is the classical reference of that but uh, there is a very interesting journey which takes from puranama mandu to prak 20 and as i said that i met several people in my lifetime and then in 1989 i came in contact with dr rajiv gulati who was the product manager of renmexi that time in delhi and he took this product puranama mandu from me and the beauty was that I used to prepare those medicines by myself under the, uh, which I learned from the, from, not from the colleges, I learned from my father how to make basmas. So this uh, Puranava Mandur was handed over to uh, Dr. Mr. Rajiv Gulati ji and they subjected it to hepatoprotective studies using CCL4. And what he showed me that uh, this Pranava Mandur was able to bring 100% regeneration in hepatocytes in CCL4 induced liver toxicity. This was the landmark thing. And then it was the journey of turning uh, Pranava Mandur to Prak 20. And later on, it was subjected to antifibrotic, detoxifying, anti inflammatory, and immunomodulator properties. So, this way, Purnarva Mandu changed its route from classical properties to today's well-defined indication. So this, uh, by this slide, I will show you the result of the first study, where you can say that uh, group 4, uh, group 3, which has CCL4 plus PRAC20, has shown 100% regeneration of hepatocytes in all animals. And the group 4, you can see that there was a control with the top brand of liver disease, but here only 50% regeneration was observed in that case. So this was the beginning. And then based on that, uh, this uh, another study was done on hepatoprotective study. And uh, this was again using CCL4, but at this time it was done in a uh, CRO by a CRO based in Tamil Nadu and they did it and they again find uh, regeneration of hepatocytes in all animal. So this was the third study on that and uh, and this is the third study hepatoprotective uh, using CCL4 and it was done by one of the leading um, liver specialists of the country and who is heading right now uh, liver and biliary disorder center in Delhi, Dr. Sarin. And he did uh, this uh, study and he found that CCL4 and PRAC20 significantly reduces necrosis and inflammation in the liver. So these are hepatoprotective study which was repeated by at three centers and it showed the consistency of the results. This is again a hepatoprotective study but this time the toxins were used paracetamol. Paracetamol is an alcohol group and again in this group you can see that liver function 
test uh, significantly lower in the group treated with PRAC20 along with that. So these four studies had established that PRAC20 is a very, possesses very strong hepatoprotective studies. And then based on that, encouraged by such things, this uh, formulation was subjected for antifibrotic studies by Dr. S. K. Sarin, a Department of Gastrology, the Human Hospital in Delhi. And this was amazing because first time ever, an antifibrotic properties was observed in a compound because usually fibrosis is irreversible in that. And safety profile, because there is a big dilemma about Ayurvedic formulation, especially when they contain osmas. And as you know, that PRAC20 has 18 herbs because it is a modified form and a standardized form of pronomamatur, which originally has 20. But this product has 18 herbs and mandur basma in equal quantity. So major concern is safety. So then the medicine was subjected to kidney failure patients who are undergoing uh, this uh, <coughs> first of all safety profile. This toxicological study, it was again done by Dr. Skisari. And here it did not show a uh, 30 mg per kg body weight, but it was given up to 10 mg, 1.5 gram, uh, up to 1.5 gram per day, in spite of 10 mg per kg body weight. And they say no significant change. The product was absolutely safe in animal studies. As they said that uh, there was a concern about uh, asthmas and kidney safety. So this was given to chronic renal disease patients by a nephrologist at uh, LNJP Hospital uh, and Molanada Medical College in Delhi. And the study shows that rather than being a toxic, it helped in improving uh, hypoproteinemia and uremia in the kidney patients so this had shown, and by, it, by this, it has depict, depicted its anti-inflammatory property. The another study, that was a human study, was done in the patient of acute viral hepatitis using very stringent inclusion and exclusion criteria. And the result clearly depicted that it is anti-inflammatory in a modern term, and which reduces the recovery time to half. Usually, acute viral hepatitis is a self-limiting disease where the patient can be better within three weeks, but here, patients were better within 10 days. So this was clearly depicted, and the study took three years. There was, again, a few studies which was uh, carried uh, by another gastroenterologist at Bolanjas Medical College. The number was small, but we could see consistency uh, of the of PAC20 in the prevention of liver and alcoholic liver disease. Similarly, ATD-induced hepatitis, it shows promising drug in the treatment of uh, ATD-induced hepatitis. Uh, then, in liver cirrhosis, early liver cirrhosis, it also showed excellent clinical recovery with fast biochemical recovery. So these has been 13 clinical studies which was carried by the subject expert at different parts of the country. And this is the beauty of the science that if there is a science, science means reproducibility. So we are seeing the same results, either it is done by a gastroenterologist in Delhi or in other hospital or by a CRO in different parts of the country. So now the question comes, don't come a medicine which is used in classical texts, turned into pregnancy, and after having so many things on liver disorder, how come this pregnancy has emerged as Ibo? So this is very interesting, as Dr. Katiara said, that we met uh, together in 1997, and I think it has some significance. Today we have Dr. G. S. Protejaji with us. He also met in 97. So in 97, I myself developed very bad 
allergic rhinitis. Very severe. My sleep was disturbed. My day activity was disturbed. And as per ARIA diagnostic criteria, I had persistent allergic rhinitis every day. I was very scared when the sun was setting. And between sunset and sunrise, my life was miserable. I used many classical everything formulations, did not work. And then I took some allopathic treatment under the guidance of MD. It worked, but very short lived. Within five days, I was back to the same situation. Then I tried homeopathy. It worked, but I got serious side effects. My tongue got swollen. I was not able to speak. And then, in a desperate condition, I took my own pulse and I found that is pizza and kapha and I was looking for a Tikashai Ras dominant formulation with anti-inflammatory property. And my mind immediately said that it should be PRAC20 or Pranamandu. So, but there was another question to me. I was taking this in a capsule form because I had undergone a very bad liver disease in 1992. And though it was cured through fraternity, so it was my life savior. I was taking it again and again. But I was taking it in a capsule form. But my learning to Ayurveda is six rasas, which are on the tongue, Madhur, Amna, Lamana, Katu, Tintasai, and three Vipa, which are in the, within the stomach. So since I was taking it in a capsule form, I got an in intuition that I should get in a powder form. And to my surprise, my Symptoms of rhinitis, my suffering with rhinitis was over within three days and I started feeling better within the first day. So this was the journey. Uh, it was coincidental. It was not intentional and I got it. Then I gave it to some other patient, third patient, fourth patient, fifth patient, and it was amazing. And this continued. This continued and this was the uh, foundation of... Uh, Imbo, and this continued for many years. And lately, I'll say about 13 years, we were using it in our practice. Some other Ayurvedic doctors were also using, some allopathic doctor were taking it, they were using. But I wanted to add science to that. Then, not very people were excited about it. As you know, there's a great rivalry that everybody talks about scientific validation of Ayurveda. Even our Prime Minister talks about it, our policy makers talk about it, our scientists talk about it. No, no, it is unscientific. But when you really want to do it, nobody come forward. First of all, they say it is allopathy, it is Ayurveda, it should be studied on Ayurvedic parameters, why allopathic parameters, allopathic matter. People say why it is on Ayurvedic parameter, it should be on allopathic, but they all talk. Nobody does. And then third thing comes, who will fund it? So though there is a big budget of Ayush, but in reality, if you want to do work, you don't get support. So there was a Maulana Hospital in Parintalmanna, Mallapuram District, Kalikat. It is a 650 bed hospital. And luckily, the, yes, the ENT specialist was aware of my work on leukemia. And then he agreed that management agreed to conduct this clinical trial in their hospital. And by involving an IV physician, we got ethical clearance, everything. And 180 patients were studied on this. And we didn't know what is going to happen after this, because this was a brand thing. We didn't know anything. And what was the study protocol? That it was uh, uh, 6 uh, July 9, 2009 to October 2010, and there was 180 patients, with 137 treated this. There was a group one, IMBO, three grams a day, group B, levosuppression, which is a known medicine, 10 per day, and the group C, where both the medicines were given together, and age group was between 10 to 70 years. There was male to female ratio, and they all had history of disease minimum for one year, and initially, Imbo was given four gram a day for first five days. And this is a slide talks about dropouts. And you can see in all the group, group A, group B, group C, group C had more dropouts in comparison to group A and group B. 
And now the result, when the result came, it was quite astonishing, unbelievable. I was never expecting that such thing will come. We found that Imbo was four times more effective than Levosutrigin. It brought 27% uh, asymptomatic in comparison to Levosutrigin 6.5, four times higher. And similarly, in fair group, it was two times more fairer and poor was less and no change was seen in that. So this was first our study to tell us about the role in the Ayurvedic formulation uh, in comparison with a well-established uh, medicine. And when we talk about side effects, so these uh, side effects involved with levosuctagina drosinus, tiredness, dry mouth, and uh, so these are the major symptoms which uh, the cause of concern with levosuctagina because the people if they're driving, they're surgeon, they are doing meetings, they find it sedative. So this uh, IMBO was four times less side effect. As you can see, group B has 36% and 8%. So message was very clear that here is a Ayurvedic compound, which is um, four times more effective and four times less side effects. And when you put statistics in that, we can say <coughs> one highly significant effect with significantly less side effect. So this is the blending of, but we did not stop. It was basically gave us a pace to do more and more. And then again, Dr. Katiar was instrumental in helping us in that. And first study was done, single dose efficacy study in 54 cases. And it was amazing that nearly most of the patients showed effect within two minutes to 15 minutes. This was the fastest acting Ayurvedic medicine, usually there's a common belief that Ayurvedic operator takes longer time to respond. But here, on the contrary, it was showing fastest result because we was stringent gestation period is one hour. It was two to 15 years. Times, as you said, one study is not enough. Then another study was carried on while it was single dose. This time, single dose multicentral efficacy study was done. And then it was on different centers. So initially study was done on one center. Now it was done on different center. But the result was same that majority of the patient showed effect within two minutes to first 15 minutes. Then this was a multi-dose Case study of IMBO in the patient of allergic rhinitis. And uh, here, 10 sachet was given 4333. And you can see that itchy nose, there was 50% relief. In um, sneezing, there was 85% relief. In itchy palate, 80% relief. Uh, rhinorrhea, 22% got relief in three days. Nasal obstruction, 31 got relief. Similarly, effect on conjunctivital hypernia because the allergic rhinitis means seven symptoms and out of seven, a person is having two. Uh, that is confirmed for that. So there was variation of things. And if arteries of eyes, there was 80% got complete relief. So this way, we are getting more and more information about the therapeutics of the book. But the question was coming, why it is happening? What is behind it? Because we know we take herbs, we make the formulation, and then we give it to the patient based on our Shastri knowledge. But we are not able to say what we were observing, how it is happening. Then another study was carried, and again, I'm thankful to Dr. C.K. Katyalji for guiding us. And not only guiding us in arranging such a study, this is an in-vitro study and antihistaminic, antihistaminic, and it shows that IMBO test sample has potential inhibiting 
in inhibiting the histaminic release from mast cell, suggesting its role as anti-allergic. So now, whatever had been seen in the clinical efficacy, there was a scientific backing through this uh, uh, in vitro study. And then, since it is working, and Ayurveda, I think it is a swastasa selection. Atura sir, Vikar Prashnathan is the science. This is the principle of Ayurveda. How it is possible to keep a healthy person healthy? That is only possible when we are able to keep immunity intact. So that's why the, in the other study, it is again in vitro, it was the natural killer cell properties. And IMPO very smartly depicted that it is a natural killer cell activity, suggesting its role as immunomodulatory. So this uh, made uh, us more confident about it because uh, we were seeing clinical efficacy and it is supported by certain clinical studies. It was reproducible. Then we got this in vitro study. And meanwhile, the product was subjected to for standardization with Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, who showed us that if we take Imbo following these steps, like how to do Shodhana Mandur, how to do Puttas, and after that Putta. So we were able to standardize for, to ascertain the reproducibility of that. And now, with all these things, Imbo has reached to almost all parts of the world. You can see that Imbo is in Bihar, Imbo is in UP, Imbo is in Assam, Imbo is in Bengal, Imbo is in Madhya Pradesh, Imbo is in South India, everywhere. It is making its root. And root is, comes of reference. There is no advertisement. Whatever we do, we maximum do Zoom meeting. We invite people, they meet, and then it is word of mouth and referral practice. And every day, the acceptance of it was going on. But business is something all. And uh, the beauty of our practice is that we talk about data collected from consumers. We believe that whatever we do, there should be intervention. And I must uh, um, salute my mentor, my friend, my brother, Dr. J. Sputejaji, who made me investigator in the district nutrition project where they were doing something and there was a what we call intervention. Whatever you do, they should see the impact. So that's where we made an analysis. And this analysis was when we found that total users of IMBO across the country is 185. And out of these, when we gave an agency, separate agency to read them, so only 84 were able to read, 101 were not readable. They didn't identify the number. So anyway, this is a random uh, review. And out of these 78 were medicals and six were non-medicals, I think they underwent for self-medication. And this is again a very interesting finding that uh, this uh, medicals, when they use IMBO, following ARIA diagnostic criteria for allergic rhinitis, they reported nearly 81% good, means Complete symptom free, 10% fair, 7% poor, and 1.2% worst. When it came to non medicals who went for self medication, only 50% say, say good. So, here the diagnosis for allergic rhinitis and infective rhinitis is a thin line. Allergic rhinitis means seven symptoms without fever, and infective rhinitis is symptom with fever. So, if a patient has infective rhinitis, IMBO alone will not help. There should be some medicine to control the infection, either from Ayurveda or from that. But that is it. That is again encouraging because whatever we have seen in earlier study, which was done, that almost 70-75% patient were showing it. Right? But Ayurvedic doctors who are able to make a good diagnosis, good follow, they showed definitely good results. And I congratulate all my Ayurvedic doctors who took pain to use IMBO in their respective practice, and then they participated in the survey. Now, what we are going to do, one thing, make hype, sell medicine, like other people who are selling it, that they got the formula and they sell it. Okay, selling is something at something else, but establishing the credibility of Ayurveda, establishing the science behind the scene efficacy is very important. And that's why we don't, know, we don't stop. So we are adding more science, and there is a basic purpose of today's need that what we have been doing 
in its by other than making immune imbo available to all. So this is an experimental study. And here we have Dr. Anil Sharma ji, Dr. Toteja ji, Dr. Katiyar ji, and many others who helped us in designing this study. Uh, it took nearly six months to design. And then this is the first time in the history of India that any polyherbo mineral ayurvedic formulation is being subjected so intensively to assess its immunomodulatory, anti-inflammatory, and anti-allergic properties. And the collaborative institute is Viprajan Biosciences, it is a mysore based CRO, which is internationally accredited and DSIR um, approved research lab of the country. And the study will be carried in albino rats and it will be in vitro in vivo. And the total budget is about 60 lakhs. And uh, I'm very happy because it is my moral duty that whatever I've earned uh, in terms of money or faith, it is through Ayurveda. And it is my duty to reinvest like income tax I pay. Similarly, it's my tax, research tax to the thing. And I'm very happy that God gave me this much courage and wisdom to carry this work forward. But I am indebted to my friends, Dr. Katiyar, Dr. Rudeja, Dr. Anil Sharma, and many others who really helped me. And uh, I, I will, uh, uh, will not do justice if I forget that, if I forget the name of Dr. Sri Prem Bodhaji, who is the CMD of IPCA lab, because IPCA lab introduced me to this lab a long, long time. And so this is the cumulative support from many people. And uh, these assessment terminals of these uh, studies are uh, here. Um, I think you all get on your net, so I don't want to go into detail because this is very technical. But these all parameters will be covered in the upcoming study. Uh, this is histopathology, histo delayed type hypertensitivity. These are the assessment terminals which has been done. And since uh, Dr. Katiyarji, who is a PhD in pharmacology with such a big experience in drug development, in leading pharmaceuticals company of India. And uh, so these are the things we are very happy to take it forward. And I hope that the findings of this study, whether negative and positive, will give us a pathway to proceed further for the understanding of this. So this is one thing, but uh, though we have taken many clinical studies by ourselves and uh, in other things, but I'm very happy that with the effort of Dr. G. S. Tutejaji, uh, the leading pediatric professor, because it's very difficult to get ethical clinics, especially in children, but based on our work on uh, IMBO, the ethical community of Anpur Medical College has given us ethical clearances to carry on further studies on IMBO and a randomized uh, active control uh, clinical study, uh, which we got on 4 June 2022. So today's update is about two things, that IMBO is being subjected for more experimental studies to know the pathway, the mode of action, how does it work, so we, it will definitely enhance our uh, our uh, understanding and wider acceptance of Ayurveda because in the scientific world people come with Kukul and we cannot say that you take one masha, two masha before meal, after meal. So these two things and the clinical trial are the real thing. Many people say that we should not embark on Western model of research, but I'm sorry. Science means science. Science doesn't differentiate between Ayurveda and Anupeta. These are the tools which we have to use as we are using Zoom. Zoom is allopathy or Ayurveda. It's a technology. So it is a wonderful tool which came, which evolved out of desperation during Corona period. It kept us connected. There is no need to run around. We can meet anytime, anywhere in the world. So these are technologies. I think Ayurveda, which is a traditional wisdom, uh, which we inherited from our ancestors, from our books, from our shastras. As Dr. Katya rightly said, it was, it was developed using tools and technology of those times 
parameters and protocol of those times, there's a need to combine with more modern technology inputs, modern gadgets, so that we can understand more that how does it work, how long it works, what is the tools, what is the duration, what is the action, interaction. And so with these things, I say thank you to all.